ďalším hosťom uh, brak konferencie, uh, tentokrát zahraničným hosťom, je Mačej Marčiš uh, z vydavateľského domu Foxal z Polska, ktorý uh, patrí k najväčším, najväčším polským vydavateľom. Mačej však uh, nie je iba uh, šéf marketingu, ale je to človek, ktorý sa dlhodobo po- pohybuje v prostredí kultúry, umenia, e, médií a e, okrem toho, že písal pre viaceré e, polské denníky a časopisy, e, ako napríklad aj pre Vok, tak má na konte aj e, dve e, svoje vlastné prozaické knihy. Takže e, dnes nám bude Mačej Marčiš hovoriť o e, knižnom marketingu, o tom, ako... E, dobre a vhodne komunikovať o svojich knihách a o tom, čím sa môžeme v Polsku inšpirovať aj my tu na Slovensku. Nech sa páči, Mačej. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, book marketing and book uh, communication. Obviously, uh, it's not possible to uh, tell everything in 30 minutes, uh, but uh, I will try to uh, do my best and just show you the landscape and maybe just tell you something about it. Uh, so uh, I heard that uh, I've been already introduced, uh, but uh, just to make sure uh, my really big face and uh, some some of the things that I did, uh, so you can uh, trust me and believe that I know uh, I know what I'm saying. Uh, so I've been uh, ahead of uh, communication of marketing for Foxal uh, for five years. Uh, before I worked in other publishing houses and also for other uh, cultural institutions like Sahenta or uh, Dessa Auction House. So I believe I, mm, I know the, the market quite, uh, quite well. And the Foxal Publishing Group, it's one of the biggest publishing houses in uh, Poland and it's a part of the Empik Group. And Empik Group, it's like the biggest Polish book chain. Um, so like Polish water stones or something like that. Um, and uh, and right now I'm going to tell you something about uh, how I see the market and communication right now. Uh, so uh, the first thing I want to tell you about, uh, and it's been like in my mind since a uh, year, uh, it's the vibe shift. Uh, the vibe shift it's a term that was coined like a year ago uh, in the um, in the text uh, that you can find on the New York magazine The Cut and uh, basically uh, the vibe shift uh, it's um, it's like a um, story about how things changed after the pandemic that uh, after the pandemic after the lockdown but also uh, I believe uh, after the um, uh, crisis and war in Ukraine Uh, people uh, change their behavior and uh, some old ways that uh, we that we used to make marketing uh, before uh, doesn't apply so much so really the vibe shift it's about uh, that you can expect that nothing today will work as it used to uh, that uh, some pandemic bestsellers or even like uh, titans of the market are not titans anymore just because something really unspeakable uh, changed within our culture and changed uh, within our society. Uh, since uh, January this year, uh, we also uh, experienced something really strange that we are still trying to figure it out, uh, that really millennials and uh, Generation X, so like older folks, uh, me, Uh, included uh, are buying uh, less books uh, in in Poland uh, something really changed and like the 
50% or even 60% of bestsellers since January are it's only young adult. It's young adult or it's targeted to the uh, young uh, young audience. Uh, one uh, of the reasons that we believe, but that's only like you know a working theory, uh, it's that um, of course the inflation and the prices and that's that's the one thing, but maybe the other thing may be connected to uh, the changing of the generations is that we believe that millennials started to have kids. So right now they are just like super tired and uh, and they only have uh, strength for Netflix and you know that's all they can do. Uh, so they are just not buying uh, so many books uh, that um, they used to. Um, and like uh, what I really recommend you is uh, to read this uh, this uh, this piece on the cut uh, because it really changes everything. And just please please read it. Just please read it. Uh, the second thing that I want to uh, tell you about it's um, like the death of uh, the trend, and uh, I guess like the trend. Um, is dead now because uh, TikTok has killed th this world. Uh, mm, because you know, right right now the culture is so fast that uh, something is trending on TikTok and it's trending for TikTok uh, for like like one day, and then it's it's dying. So like. Mm, it's, this is another uh, text that I encourage you to to read, and it's really about uh, about the death of a trend, and uh, it's also um, something that I really feel uh, when I uh, see the Polish market that readers and consumers uh, of culture are going in many opposing directions uh, simultaneously. So you can really say, for example, small publishers are growing strong and people want to uh, buy like sophisticated novels. And that can be true, but also uh, the truth can be that uh, some young adult shitty novels are uh, like super popular. And so really uh, what you can uh, expect right now, especially in Poland, it's that everything is trending all at once. So like, like you know, like this, like, like this movie uh, uh, that, that, will, that, that got the Oscar. Um, and I think that that is something that we should really think about when we think about communications and when we think about uh, people who are uh, buying uh, books. Um, as a professional, I'm really uh, very frequently asked uh, by other people and other people in the industry, uh, Maciek, is it still working? Like, uh, uh, is uh, TV, is, is, it, is it working? Is it affecting the sales or uh, maybe newspapers? Like, is it really working? Is it still working? And uh, I guess uh, after careful consideration, my answer would be uh, that I guess everything is working and everything isn't working at the same time. Uh, so, um, really, Heritage Media, Present TV, uh, they are no longer driving the sales, and but of course, they still work, but maybe not so much. And uh, right now in Poland and in Polish book marketing, actually everything is about uh, influencers. And uh, that is the only thing that... Um, is driving the sales uh, for sure. Uh, so, uh, so really, uh, we can have uh, like the author in the biggest uh, Polish morning uh, show uh, talking about the books for two hours, or like, and then we like see nothing, like nothing really changes. And uh, and what really is driving the sales are the um, recommendations of um, the influencers. But uh, I guess uh, what I can really say about this media landscape and market landscape is that it became uh, really uh, m even more challenging because to uh, successfully sell a book, you really have to do 
more and more and more and like be on all the social platforms and try all the ways and then maybe if you have some luck uh, you would uh, you would sell uh, something so um, like um, now I will be um, speaking a little bit like a veteran a veteran of the market but I really um, <laughs> I really remembered the times uh, and it was like <laughs> It was like, I don't know, like eight years ago or maybe seven years ago that if you had like three things, like you you, 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 you had to have three things and then you, you could be like a king of bestsellers. So you should have like a morning TV show, uh, one uh, influential uh, radio journalist that is called Michał Nogas in, in Poland. And you should have, uh, you should have a women's feminist magazine that is called High Heels. So if you have these three things, then you would be like, you know, lying on the floor and like the, the job is done. And right now these three things are like, mm, it's nice to have them, but they really don't uh, drive the sales uh, so much. So uh, you can uh, feel, uh, you know, the desperation of all uh, people working in the field. Uh, and uh, that uh, that is something that I also wanted wanted to tell you. I'm also uh, curious if you have the same thing uh, here in your country. Uh, uh, we have uh, office of competition and consumer protection, and since like a year, uh, they really came after the influencers. So, on the one thing, uh, on the one hand, it's really. Uh, good, uh, because of course consumers should know that you pay influencers to uh, endorse products, but uh, at the same time, obviously, it also uh, made uh, our job more visible, because right now in Poland, every influencer, even if it's only for barter, even if you just give a, a review of, uh, like, copy of the book uh, for them to make a review, uh, they should, uh, in really clear way, write that uh, this post was made with cooperation with Foxal Publishing House, of this post was made in cooperation with other publishing house or other uh, company. So I believe that this, uh, what I said already, like made our job uh, more uh, visible, but also uh, undermine a little bit uh, the influence of all these uh, paid uh, partnerships. Um, the second thing is that uh, really the marketing uh, in Poland uh, and uh, the marketing of books uh, especially is um, it's really watched very closely by podcasters, by bloggers, by influencers, by other people uh, in the market. And for example, you can have like whole podcast about a campaign of some book, or you can have, uh, and like people are criticizing it, or they are like saying some good things about it, but usually they are criticizing it, of course, because uh, because this is how it's, um, I don't know, this is how it works in Poland, or maybe this is how it works uh, in every country, I don't know, but it's always like that, that if the promotion marketing it's good, people are like, hmm, yeah, that's obvious, but if, it, but if it's too much, uh, they are also like saying that, oh my God, this is overhyped, like it's too much hype. Or they're saying, oh, this book, the marketing did poor, nothing is uh, nothing is said about this book, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but yeah, this is what I wanted to tell you that uh, right now in Poland, the uh, marketing and promotion is much more visible due to uh, this Office of Competition and Consumer Protection. Uh, some influencers, not book influencers, but influencers in Poland uh, had been already uh, given uh, uh, fines, like uh, huge, uh, huge fines for not uh, writing about the paid partnerships if they had one. So it was, so it's like fine, for example, for uh, not saying that uh, the um, that the alcohol company paid them to show the beer, uh, they get like twenty five thousand euros uh, fine uh, if they are a big influencer. So really, this is um, this is something that uh, also made influencers a little bit scared. Yeah. 
uh, w like two weeks ago, uh, I was uh, asked uh, by some uh, uh, small uh, publisher that it's uh, publishing um, like nominated novels and like, you know, sophisticated literature and he's also a friend of mine. Uh, Maciek, please tell me what are, you know, the new influencers that are uh, reading uh, this kind of uh, literature? Like, please tell me some new names because I, I believe you, you have some. And th this is when I understood that uh, the new generation of readers, they are really uh, reading differently. Uh, maybe because they are young and it will change, but maybe just because they are different, uh, they are really looking for the emotion, and they are not uh, they are not uh, searching for the book by genre. So I cannot, I couldn't uh, really uh, tell my friend. So these are the people that are reading like the literature that you are publishing because they are really reading everything. One day uh, they can read fantasy, uh, the other day they can read nonfiction, uh, the other day they will uh, read some really, really uh, different novel with really poetic language, and they will also like it, and they will also endorse it. So uh, it's another thing that, of course, uh, is making our job uh, more uh, challenging that uh, you really have to just try. You, you, you have to try, you have to send them every book <laughs> and hope that uh, they, will, uh, they will like it. Uh, and yeah, that, 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 that is really interesting and something that uh, we are still figuring it out. Uh, and obviously the things that uh, we already put in our books, like even in the print, uh, are the triggers warning at, at the beginning of each book. Uh, even if it's obvious, I don't know, on the cover, uh, that this is a book about murder or something, uh, we put like trigger warnings, please beware that this novel contains murder and uh, people dying, etc., etc. And uh, I guess it's really, it's really okay to put it, like it doesn't cost a thing, but the young generation uh, really um, appreciate it, really appreciate it. And uh, th this is also how you can get more publications uh, because uh, they are writing in social media, oh my God, like this publishing house is so great. They are so responsible. They have these trigger warnings. Yeah, so we are doing it. Uh, the other thing is uh, when it comes to this younger generation, uh, the editorial quality is the message itself. Uh, so uh, this is also the thing that um, uh, that is really interesting about this generation that if you would think about the stereotypes, so we would say, oh, these younger people, they are so like, you know, in the internet and they are so modern. So uh, I believe they are uh, reading uh, ebooks here yeah, or like online uh, versions of the books, uh, but that's completely not true. Uh, they are uh, reading paper and the quality of the edition is super important um, for them. So uh, here on the um, left side you can see uh, the bubble by Rebecca Kuang. It's not published by our, uh, by our publishing house but, but different. But uh, they made those special editions with the colored uh, edges. And uh, after uh, three months, uh, now we know that the special edition that was much, 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 uh, ex uh, much more expensive sold better than the standard edition. Uh, so, like, uh, even with the inflation and even with the question, like, those people don't have their own money, they're only spending the money of their parents. How is it possible? But I guess it's possible, and um, and right now when we have some uh, books uh, for young readers, uh, we uh, really pay attention to uh, how it's published, and uh, we don't have um, we don't even have to worry about the price so much. Uh, so uh, I don't know what are the prices of books here, but I guess. Mm, like a standard edition of book uh, in Poland, 
would cost like 11, 12, uh, 12 euros. And uh, those special editions uh, were more like uh, 30, uh, 30 euros and they sold uh, really well. So, uh, of, of course, I believe that uh, the thing of the edition is important for uh, the Gen Z because they can show it on social media, uh, they can make uh, TikTok with it or they can put it on Instagram and it's not the same as with, um, you know, Kindle, uh, that it's, well, meh uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to social media opportunities. Uh, okay, um, the other thing about this uh, younger generation is that uh, really uh, you cater to them and as they are uh, frequently uh, English uh, speaking or English reading, uh, they are very interconnected to the um, uh, global publishing market, even sometimes more than the publishers itself. Uh, they are spending uh, many, uh, much time on Goodreads, they are uh, spending much time on the book talk, so sometimes they already know what they want to read and you just have to listen to them. Uh, and this is really an amazing, amazing uh, source of inspiration and uh, source of the research. And this is what we do uh, frequently in the last uh, one year, one year and a half. Uh, this, is, uh, this is one of our brands. Uh, the brand is called Uroboros, like the uh, snake that is eating itself. And it's the symbol of eternity or something. And uh, we are publishing here only fantasy and uh, sci-fi and fantasy and young adult. And it's targeted mostly for, uh, for the Gen Z. And uh, we just, here is an example of uh, one of our editors uh, and what we are doing uh, here in this post is just asking, hey, meet our editor, uh, please tell us what you want to read, please uh, tell us what books uh, you want us to publish. And we got really like on this post, like here, 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 here you have like 20 books already that they want. Uh, and like the comments are, are going, uh, so uh, of course uh, some of these books are, are already bought by other publishers, but some are not. And it's really an amazing opportunity for us to uh, check uh, what, uh, what they want. Um, also like the other um, argument for this, it's that um, they all, if they really want the book, they can also uh, read it in uh, English language. So uh, that is also uh, why the edition of the book is uh, so um, important. Yeah. Uh, so this is the thing that uh, you can uh, you can try. Uh, the thing uh, that is also challenging for our market is the thing that uh that you know on the one hand we are amazed by the new generation because they are so um assertive and they really value the uh, value the importance of work life balance and of the boundaries but uh, when it comes to uh, our work uh, they are uh, less keen to promote our books for uh, barter and even if they have like um, i don't know 3 4000 followers on instagram uh, they won't do anything uh, without uh, money i guess it's i guess it's okay but for uh, for our budget uh, it's also uh, challenging really to balance all the uh, things that you have to put in uh, one uh, campaign uh, that is really something that amazes me and uh, it's also like a sweet thing it's all uh, it's also about uh, the new generation of readers uh, I believe that you have here also like a media pat uh, pat media patrons like uh, uh, media that you uh, put a logo on the 
fourth uh, cover of the book, and you exchange some uh, you exchange some uh, media coverage uh, for the book. But in uh, recent years, it became uh, for the heritage media something that wasn't working so much. And uh, right now, uh, it's also all about the um, uh, patrons, uh, like influencers. So uh, on the fourth cover of the book, usually we have the, their faces, because uh, their logos are usually the, their faces. And uh, if you uh, if you put like the influencer on the book that uh, she he them uh, like, uh, they are super proud of it. And um, what they are doing for the book, it's really amazing. Like uh, they are so proud, and it's uh, so full of emotion uh, when when they have they their face, their name on the fourth. Um, uh, fourth uh, cover of the book uh, that um, it's really working. It's one of the things that it's truly, truly working uh, right now. And you can see uh, many videos and many TikToks of of those girls when they, you know, open uh, the um, packages and like almost cry in emotion because they see their uh, their logo or their face on the. Uh, fourth um, cover of the book. Yeah. Uh, this is how uh, the uh, list of uh, biggest bestseller list in Poland look right now. Uh, it's only Wattpad. Uh, so um, this is, so, so like this is like the state of uh, book market uh, right now. Uh, and uh, everybody, of course, is uh, asking this themselves, uh, why is it like that? We believe that it's because on Wattpad you have uh, so... Um, you can comment every line of the book and give feedback to almost every word. So first, those books are published uh, uh, on Wattpad. Then uh, the traditional publishers are... Uh, taking them, giving uh, the deals uh, to uh, to these authors, and then they are uh, publishing it. Uh, usually, uh, dividing it to um, two chapters because these books are too long to publish in one. And of course, you can also um, earn more money by making many uh, many chapters of um, of the same uh, book. Uh, when it comes to the domination of uh, Wattpad-driven uh, books, some publishers are also trying it the different ways. So they have like traditional, I guess, book, and uh, and they are putting it on Wattpad before the publication. So because they believe that it could it could drive uh, the sales. Uh, but I, I was uh, I was saying uh, much about like uh, younger generation and the things that are like trending really right now in the last uh, six eight months. Uh, but I believe that uh, when it comes to books, uh, there is nothing more po powerful still than the power of uh, recommendation and then the power of the recommendation that you can trust. So uh, our job, uh, I believe, it's uh, mostly about finding the people that other readers trust. And it's like a constant job of finding new voices, uh, new influencers, uh, new journalists, and sometimes even like not traditional, like not, not even influencers, but some public figures. Uh, so this is what we do uh, constantly. And uh, oh, here you have uh, here you have um, one of our like TV uh, TV personalities. You could say that she's a little bit like Polish. I don't know, opera, something like this. Uh, but yeah, with some differences, of, obviously. Uh, but uh, what we are uh, what we are doing with all those influencers, and I believe that it's really the um, easiest way to measure uh, their influence, 
uh, with all the um, uh, paid uh, partnerships, uh, we create uh, dis uh, discount codes uh, for, uh, for them. So uh, it's really simple. Uh, we first ask them, like, please um, choose like 15 or 20 or 10 books from our catalog uh, that you really like and that you sincerely recommend and that you really re have read before. Uh, so they are choosing those books, and then uh, we create for them uh, like a special, uh, special link with only the books that uh, they recommend. Uh, the code, uh, of course, is making the books a little bit um, cheaper uh, than uh, than normal. Uh, it lasts for like five or six days, and after uh, this kind of uh, action, uh, we can really measure uh, if their recommendation works or not and uh, like especially in the christmas uh, before the christmas when obviously everyone is buying the books uh, for gifts uh, then we have like a really great ranking of the influence of each uh, person that uh, we uh, worked with uh, so we see uh, how many mm, how many books they've sold. We see uh, what books uh, that they recommended really worked. Uh, we see how many money each people spent and how many books they put into like one order. Uh, so it's a really simple and great way to uh, measure all the paid partnerships. And uh, obviously sometimes um, Sometimes uh, it's really disappointing because you see that uh, people that uh, some person that has great following and great numbers of followers really doesn't do a thing. And sometimes it's super surprising because you can have uh, an influencer that have a small range of followers, but uh, but those followers are really believing, trusting this person, or those followers have money to buy books. So. Of course, it's um, it's not about the numbers, it's about uh, the trust, and it's about uh, engagement. Uh, Pop-ups. Uh, Pop-ups uh, are the thing that I really like, and I uh, use it quite often in the campaigns if I have some money to do it in the budget. Uh, and after the lockdowns, uh, people are back in the city and I believe they're hungry for uh, experiences and some connection with other people. Uh, so uh, these are uh, the two uh, pop-up activations that were quite popular in Poland in last two weeks, <laughs> last two, three weeks. Uh, so first thing, it's the pop-up that uh, we made. Uh, the book that you see here, it's uh, a pop science book. Uh, pop science book uh, about, and the title of the book, uh, it's how you can measure the force of tornado by waffle. It's, you know, it's some silly, it's some silly question uh, because the character of the book, it's like very, Humor, uh, humoristic and uh, so we really we really um, focus on the um, uh, this waffle waffle and we uh, created a food truck uh, that was uh, giving the waffles uh, for free uh, to people during the um, during the book first in Warsaw and the author of the book uh, was um, uh, was signing the copies of the book uh, in the front of this food truck and also selling the waffles from the food truck uh, it's uh, first uh, she was in uh, first she was in uh, wrocław the city that she is from uh, then she traveled with this uh, food truck to uh, warsaw and so it was like a two days uh, journey uh, promoting uh, the book in some uh, more uh, like non-standard uh, way. It wasn't so expensive actually because uh, uh, because uh, we uh, 
um, per persuaded the um, uh, owner of the food truck that they will lend us it like for barter for the promotion of the uh, of the campaign and everything so we really had to you know pay for the waffles the gas parking and everything and the branding uh, but it wasn't so expensive uh, as I first was um, thinking and uh, the other pop-up activation it's uh, it was made by the other publishing house it's connected to the Wattpad uh, phenomenon that uh, was on the uh, bestseller list on the first place and uh, in the center of uh, Warsaw uh, they made uh, they made this uh, space uh, that was uh, that was um, like a room of the main character of the novel uh, and uh, also in this uh, pop-up uh, they had the author and the author was uh, signing the books uh, and like they have uh, they have it like for uh, for a week in the in the center of uh, of Warsaw uh, I know that uh, like this uh, was a little bit more expensive but uh, when it comes to pop-ups um, I believe that you can really make it uh, sometimes even with a uh, smaller budget, uh, for example, if you partner with some cafe or restaurant that is already existing, so then you can, what you need only is some some budget to, uh, you know, to to put some, um, how to, how to put it, yeah you know so, some things like to make it more like your book like connected to the book uh, and i believe that uh, that really after the pandemic uh, people are looking for the connections and they are like hungry for some experiences and they are a little bit tired of online so if you give them opportunity to uh, experience something uh, something uh, different with uh, with the book uh, they will really come and uh, i don't know like the queue for these waffles and the autographs uh, was standing uh, there for like five or six hours uh, and like when i see those people in the queue i was i'm all, always asking myself like you really don't you really have time for this like you you don't want to do something different with your life uh, but uh, but we are of course happy that uh, we are happy that they're doing it and even right now uh, especially again when it comes to the uh, younger uh, younger uh, generation uh, the people are really like they are calling themselves the cures like the people who are standing in the queue and it's like a hobby of going with your friends knowing that you will be there waiting in the queue to your favorite author so you know you know you bring food maybe you bring some alcohol maybe you uh, bring your uh, wireless speaker to put some music and you spend ni nice time uh, 5 hours in the queue uh, waiting for um, the autograph uh, but of course, I also believe that it's uh, less about the autograph and more about the selfie. Uh, and like uh, sometimes I believe that when it comes to those younger audiences, but not only, the book, it's like a ticket to get a selfie because uh, you know people are maybe a little bit shy to uh, ask for the selfie, but if they have books, so they have this feeling that they paid something for them to feel good about asking uh, for the selfie yeah uh, so welcome to poland and <laughs> uh, and the other trend uh, that i think it's really interesting is that uh, the book right now in poland has many more faces uh, like a couple years ago it was only the writers the writers and maybe the critics but right now uh, we have also uh, influential editors that are becoming like the influencers themselves uh, we have translators that also are 
more and more visible. Uh, so uh, I think it's I think it's uh, something that you can uh, really use and uh, convince the people within your company to make the brand on the of themselves like uh, it doesn't have to be a writer you can really build your personal brand if you're a translator if you're an editor uh, if you are a reader uh, and uh, it will add to the campaign of the book and maybe you will gather the group that will trust you and will uh, buy your books yes and the, I don't know how how is it here, but like the streaming for books is is the new standard in in Poland. And what we can see right now, it's like really the streaming uh, wars uh, because uh, it's really interesting that uh, on each platform, it's like the same with Netflix and HBO. You have different books, so the market of of book streaming it's really uh, complicated because uh, not on every of this platform you will have the same um, the same books but as I'm told my time is ticking so I will go to the other um, slide and um, that is the thing that I wanted to tell you about that right now in Poland uh, audiobooks uh, became like a prestige TV thing so for uh, the most popular uh, books or for the books that you want them to make popular uh, the publishers are creating like a super, a super productions of the audiobooks and they are hiring uh, the most famous uh, actors and they make uh, photo shoots that look like the movies but they are audiobooks yes but uh, this is how you like try to uh, promote uh, the book uh, even more and the other thing uh, the last thing that I want to tell you about it's uh, also the thing that we discovered uh, recently uh, because Facebook is a graveyard of like old people and like no likes and no reach and it's super frustrating and we're thinking like when where those people went like where they are and now we discovered it they're on LinkedIn looking for another job so uh, so <laughs> Uh, so right now really we are also uh, like made a new list of another influencers of people that are super active on LinkedIn and have uh, their riches there and it's not only about the books uh, connected to business it's about all the books and we are working with like people on LinkedIn the same way as we work with uh, people on Instagram or on uh, TikTok and uh, and thank you i think we have time only for one question so i will uh, use it for uh, my question you work for a big uh, publishing house in poland uh, but i am a really small slovak publisher uh, and i am also pr manager and uh, driver and a uh, lot of things uh, and uh, you say the really really lot of things but uh, what's the first and only thing what I have to do to be famous here? <laughs> to be what? To be famous? To As a publisher. As a publisher. No, I believe that... How, how old are you? 28. 28. Uh, yeah, so I believe that maybe you are uh, maybe you are too old for TikTok, but maybe not so much. But I, I really believe that you should like start your Instagram profile if you don't have one and uh, try to educate people about the market. Because like one of the things that is still driving the Instagram right now is the education or like uh, fake education. So like you are faking that you're educating people by and then you get the traffic and then you get the reach and then you cancel your books <laughs> thank you very much Maciej Marcisz thank you thank you